Hey everyone, it's Ron Johnson. This is the Ron Johnson Show on Locked On Sports Minnesota. I got Coach Chris Rump for the Minnesota Vikings. He's going to join us today on the Hanging with Ron Johnson segment. He's going to talk a little bit about the defensive line. Of course, we know Daniel Hunter's a part of that. Uh, not sure if he's going to resign or not, if he's going to get traded. But we'll talk to Coach Chris Rump about all the things surrounding this defense. Brian Flores versus Ed Donatel. What's the difference? Also, the Minnesota Vikings, top 10 offensive arsenal weapons. But what number did they come in at? And was that number okay, or were they disrespected? We'll talk about that next on the Ron Johnson Show. Locked on Sports Minnesota Podcasts. It's endless Minnesota Vikings talk with the diverse voices of your local experts. Now the Ron Johnson Show. On the field, in the broadcast booth, Ron Johnson is Minnesota sports. He's played with them, hung out with them, and grown up with all the big names in Minnesota sports. They're hanging out with Ron Johnson. It's the Ron Johnson Show on the Locked On Sports Minnesota podcast. And it starts now. Hey, everyone. It's Ron Johnson. This is the Ron Johnson Show on Locked On Sports Minnesota got a busy show for you today we got to talk a little bit about this minnesota vikings top 10 arsenal espn voted it we'll see if you guys agree with us or not i'm gonna bring my producer sam maxim to the show but before we do i want you to know this episode is brought to you by fanduel sportsbook the official sportsbook of locked on just go to fanduel.com backslash locked on to get started today i know there's not a ton of sports out there but baseball there's still some good ones i unfortunately didn't bet on lsu should have bet on lsu to beat florida plus uh, i think it was like plus 146 odds so didn't happen, but there's still a lot out there for you. Minnesota Twins, they're going to finish their uh, series versus the uh, Braves. So might be something there worth, worth betting on. But as I bring my producer to the show, Sam Ekstrom. Sam, so we got to talk about this. Every Everybody is trying to create content in the offseason. We know it's not a ton of content in the offseason. And we, we got crew Coach Chris Rump coming up. So we're not going to talk too much about the defense because we'll let him talk about the Vikings defense, talk about – uh, some guys he likes on the defense. I really like how he talked about Ed Donatel versus Brian Flores. So if you want to hear that, it's going to be a good one. Coach Chris Rump, D-line coach for the Minnesota Vikings, going to explain the differences in the defenses. One coach gets fired, another coach gets hired. It's the nature of the business. We've all been there. But what does he think the differences are, and how can Brian Flores make this? I, I will say this. He called him a painter, but the painting's not done yet. So I, I do like that. But to, And we're going to talk about that in the Daily 3, too, because I know I saw a question in there about the defense. But mm-hmm. – we got to talk about this Arsenal, Sam. And I, and, I, and I was hoping you didn't see it, but you saw it, of course. So I'll kind of go down the list. And if you want to yeah. explain to the people, Sam, what, 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 is, what are the parameters of this Bill Barnwell? I'm starting to – I mean, I understand we like Bill Barnwell and ESPN, but I'm starting to question some of his thought process because I'll get your take on it. But what, what is this question? Yeah, so Barnwell took the key skill players on each team, so like the five best offensive players outside of the quarterback, basically. And he ranked them one through 32. So the core offensive skill players ranked Vikings fell in the top 10 Ron, which I was pleasantly surprised about. Do we want to tell people they they were number six? Why were you surprised though? Because Addison is a rookie. He's unproven. Osborne is a, you know, he's, he's been a solid wide receiver three, but he's not a star in the league. Uh, and they lost Dalvin Cook. So they put a lot of like emphasis on Jefferson and, and Hawkinson. But I didn't think they were as deep as some other teams. So where would you have put them? Probably like 10 to 12, I think. Oh. <laughs> so I know you, I'm not going to I'm not going to have you just think about this while I while I talk. Think about this. Where would you have put unless you have the answer? I don't know if you have the answer, but where would you have put like who would you have put in? instead of them at six yeah that's a good question i got probably should uh should pull up the list huh because so here's here i'll give you the list give give me give me six through ten so you got six through ten you got vikings at six cowboys at seven dolphins at eight jags at nine and i do understand the jags added some pieces christian kirk is going to be another year of you know he's going to keep growing trevor lawrence is in his next echelon quarterback is a big part of this that's why I think number one is, and I'll explain mine too, and then Falcons at 10, of course, B. John Robinson. Uh, you bring Cordero Patterson back. Uh, I did get a chance to meet his uh, offensive center guard. Um, forgot his name already, but big dude, 300-pounder. 
uh, going into his 10th year. And he said he confirmed when I was at Blake Barrett's uh, event in Minnesota that Cordell Patterson had resigned. But this is this is my thought when I look at this. The only thing I thought about Vikings at six, I agree with you. So it's a weird day. I don't agree with a lot, but I agree with you on that. I do think the Vikings are maybe a little high because, again, Jordan Addison unproven. KJ Osborne hasn't done anything just yet as far as wide receiver two. I thought the Dolphins should have been ahead of the Vikings. I thought the Cowboys should have been ahead of the Vikings. Um, I would have put them at like eight, though. I, I don't I, I'm not trusting because the, the Falcons are Bijan John Robinson's young, too. Um, they're you know, their quarterback is Calvin what, Ritter is going to be the quarterback, I think. Um, and so I, I would have put the Falcons where they are. I would have left the Jags where they are. I would have said Vikings at eight. Now, I don't know if there's and then 49ers, Bengals, Eagles, Seahawks, Chargers are one through five. The only reason, again. The 49ers, to me, I get Arsenal, so we're not truly talking about quarterback, but I think this is a little bit quarterback-driven. But for the 49ers, I think it's offensive-driven. I think this is all about the coach. I think this is all about what Shanahan does. It has nothing to do, because when I look at the pieces, I mean, Brandy, Brandon Ayuk is okay. Debo Samuels is it. George Kittle is the best. Uh, you got Hughes Check, who's one of the top fullback tight ends. But I still think it's, I mean, and then you got Christian McCaffrey, who's one of the best two-way players as far as running back and receiver, mm -hmm. but you don't know who the quarterback's really going to be. Brock Purdy's hurt. Uh, is it going to be, you know, Trey Lance? So in my opinion, I, I think that was a little bit pushed towards Shanahan's offense. I personally, and maybe I'm, I'm a little bullish on Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow, I thought Bengals should have been one or Eagles should have been one. I thought between yeah. Eagles and Bengals, that should have been one and two. I would have dropped the 49ers down probably to three, maybe with the Seahawks because DK Metcalf. Um, but again, I thought the Seahawks were a little high. I thought the Chargers should have been inside of the Seahawks, but that's just me. But I don't know. Is there a team you would have, if you put Minnesota at 11 or 12, would have thrown in there? It, yeah. The, um, who, oh yeah, the Dolphins, who you agreed with, you would have put the Dolphins and the Cowboys, both of those teams. I also thought when you said it, yeah, those guys have to be a little bit higher. It seems, Ron, that they gave a lot of preference to like these rookie receivers. Like they're putting, yeah. The Seahawks, the Chargers, and the Vikings are pretty high, and they've all got first round rookie wide receivers, which is is kind of a question mark, right? Like we don't know if they're all going to be impact guys right away. It's not right. a guarantee, but Barnwell seemed to think, and, and I don't I don't know if you read the full recap, he seemed to think that Addison over Thielen was a huge upgrade, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, I don't know about that one. I mean, I, I get the speed difference, I get the taking the top off. Uh, when, you talk, when you talk about two by two, if you put Addison and Jefferson on the same side, I get it. If you talk about bunch, you put Addison, KJ Osborne, and, and uh, Jefferson on the same side, I get that too. If you put Hawkins into that bunch. So I get where he's going because Thielen doesn't scare you. And I think Jordan Addison's speed does scare people. It's a different beast. You put those two guys on the same side. You, the safety has to pick his poison. And my guess is he's going to pick Justin Jefferson every time. So if Jordan Addison can come through with a little bit of speed down the field, uh, Thielen had lost a step, but Thielen ran four four six, and people forgot that. So I think that's where a lot of people misunder uh, uh, underrated. I guess I'd say is what Adam Thielen was, but he did have the speed. But I get where Bill Barr was going. If you look at the historical young receivers since twenty twenty, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, and then you move up now with Garrett Wilson. You know he's he's just betting on the 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 horse and the jockey, saying you know what these receivers have been great the last couple of years, maybe. YouTube, Instagram, something's making them better. This receiver factory crap, um, but it is what it is. I I, I get it. Well, you know the numbers. I love these lists because then we can come back mid season maybe and do a follow up. Like, hey, this was the top arsenals to start the year. Here's where they are midway through the season. At the end of the year, let's. I mean, because I got it. I wrote it down. So we'll we'll have this. This is in in the histories uh, of of the Rod Johnson show. We'll talk about this again to see if, Bar if Bill Barnwell was right or if I'm right, and it's the Bengals and the Eagles. I think they're going to take off. The one funny thing though was seeing Irv Smith Jr. in his Vikings picture with the with the Bengals, and I don't know if they do that on purpose to remind you there's a new player. But I'm like, you could have got any picture from him at practice. He just did his media day. You could have put him in a Bengals uniform for this. So, but I get it. Maybe it's new, you know, old face, new place type thing. And they're trying to let people know, hey, this is why I put them there because they've upgraded at the tight end position. I, I think that is too. We we needed um, we needed him to be too much in Minnesota with Irv Smith Jr. And I think mm -hmm. the Bengals don't need him to be anything but what he is. And I think that's going to be the key. Maybe he's relaxed. It's less pressure. Um, surprisingly, though, the Jets aren't on this with Aaron Rodgers. And so I just think there's some hate for Aaron Rodgers. I think people hate what Aaron Rodgers did, so the Jets aren't going to get any love. Um, Garrett Wilson, 
you add Alan Lazard because I would I, I, I want to go back. I'm going to go back and maybe we'll do this next Monday uh, and look at some of the ratings of like Alan Lazard Packers with that offense and where they ranked at the beginning of the year last year. I don't know if we can find an old Bill Barber from last year and see what he thought about Romeo Dubs with Alan Lazard and uh, and Aaron Rodgers. Because if he put them in the top 10 back last year, then he's he's just being biased now because yeah. you got Alan Lazard with a better receiving group, better running back combo. You know, Tyler Conklin, I guess you can say, ah, but then they're going to add Dalvin Cook, you know, so you got Dalvin Cook in that group. I think it's easily in the top 10, uh, but I think there's some Aaron Rodgers hate there, but we got to get to coach. We got to get to coach Chris Rump. He's going to join us on the Hanging Around Johnson segment. Loved uh, his his talk with his players, and that's one of the big things. He talked about how he's growing with his players. Uh, got some team players on the team getting married, too. He said he's giving them marriage advice. They've asked him a ton of questions about it, so we're going to talk to him next on the Hanging Around Johnson segment. Before we do that, we got a word from our sponsors. We're brought to you today by FanDuel Sportsbook, as we are each and every day this summer here on the Ron Johnson Show. Baseball season's in full swing. No better place to get on the action than at FanDuel. It's run lines. It's money lines. It's the Twins playing the Braves as underdogs trying to avoid being swept. You can bet that in all Major League Baseball games at FanDuel.com slash locked on. They've got great promotions, including the no sweat first bet up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't win, yes, up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. Take advantage of that and everything else at FanDuel. Every line, every league at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Check it out today. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. Well, hey, everybody. It's Ron Johnson, and we're in the Hanging with Ron Johnson segment. As promised, Chris Rump. He is the Vikings defensive line coach, so when you guys think about defense alignment for the, the, the newbies out there, that's the big guys that put their hands in the ground, and when a coach puts a football on a stick like a hot dog, he hikes it, and they go. Um, so we call them trained dogs on offense. That's what we used to say. Like, they are just going to get after us. They don't have to know much. They don't have to be smart, but they got to listen. They got to be coachable and they got to be able to get after the quarterback. And this is the man that gets it done for the purple. Uh, but you know what? Chris Rump has some other stuff that you guys don't know about that we have to get into. Um, your sons, man, are, are absolute athletes. And you have a son at the, we'll start with high school. You have a son at Eden Prairie High School in Minnesota, one of the top high schools in, in the state, probably one of the top high schools in the country when you talk about winning. Um, his, his coach, uh, which I'm pretty sure you've met, uh, his dad was Bud Grant for the Vikings. So Mike Grant has a long lineage of coaching, but you have a son that you see on Friday nights. So being a coach with the pro team college, and you see your high school son in a high school pro, do you ever get to the point where you want to go over to that defensive line coach and say, Hey man, why, why are you have him stunting this way? What, what are y'all even doing over here? Or do you just kind of sit back as dad? Man, you know, um, just, just starting out early and, and starting my kids out early, you see those guys that are out there and, and they're coaching bad techniques and <laughs> you just want to get out there. Not saying eating prayer. I'm just talking about in the past. Right, period, yeah. Um, you know, you, you want to get out there, but, you know, then my wife is always tugging on me like, nah, don't say anything. Um, just let them, you know, do what they have to do. If there's anything that's going to cause some safety issues, then you speak up before it's technique and fundamentals. Uh, you let the coach coach, and then when you get them at home, you can work with them and do things like that to try to correct some of the things that I think is uh, incorrect. And I'm pretty sure now, like Minnesota sports, high school sports for sure, uh, they're savvy. Like they know who kids' parents are. Like when Rick Spielman was here and his sons, J.D. and Ronnie, were playing at Eden Prairie High School as well. Um, same with Carter Coughlin, who's playing for the Giants. His dad, Bob Coughlin, uh, you know, was a former player for the Gophers as well. Like these these people know the dad. So how often do parents come to you and just want to talk Vikings football? You know, um, not a lot. You know, they do. They, I think they respect me. And uh, a lot of times if people try to come up to me and and just talk football, I, I'll switch the subject around and try to find out, you know, what are you doing? What do you do for a living? And, and you know, make it where the conversation is just not focused on me and, and just ball. But I'm also want to be interested in, you know, what are you doing with your life and what are you doing at your job and things like that. And just another way for me just try to learn. Yeah, and when you, I mean, and talking about learning, I mean, you've learned from some great coaches. You know, you stopped at Clemson. You've been in Alabama, Texas, Florida. I mean, Tennessee. You've been at the best of the best when you talk about colleges. What did you, like, what did you take from each stop, you know, that you kind of bought with you to the Minnesota Vikings? 
Well, first, man, you know, God has truly um, blessed me tremendously, uh, more than I deserve to to be in these positions and to coach at those places that you just mentioned and um, to um, coach those guys that I coach and uh, be around the coaches and the guys that I learn things from. I think one of the things that, that, that I've learned is um, just culture. I think that's uh, – I think you hear that word tossed around a lot, and I've heard it tossed around a lot, but – until you are in different cultures and you don't really, I said, I guess you don't realize how important culture is until you get into a bad culture. Yeah. And so I, I, I've taken away from each of those coaches, um, the good and the bad, but when all balls, when it all balls down to is, is culture and you know, how you treat people. Yeah. I mean, and I think that's like when you look at uh, – because I've been here with the Minnesota Vikings. I've been here with the Gophers uh, going into our ninth year of Vikings game day live. Uh, we do your pregame shows on Fox, and, you know, we do, you know, all kinds of different content. And so I've seen a lot of different regimes, and that's been the, the good thing. Like I've seen every offensive coordinator come through. I've seen every defensive coordinator come through. And, and, and I've, you know, Adam Thielen and, and, and Stefan Diggs and all these guys I've created relationships with, C.J. Ham. So I can hear some of the things, some stuff I talk about, some stuff I don't. But I love the word culture because in the NFL, and this is what's funny to me, and, and you, you're here in Minnesota, so you hear the roll the boat stuff with P.J. Fleck. When P.J. Fleck got to Minnesota and started saying roll the boat, he got chastised. He got beat down. And everybody's like, what? This sounds like a you, you, you culture. And it's not. It's about giving and serving. And it's about uh, putting your back to the target and just rowing and trusting the person leading you, which is your coach. Uh, for those that know rowing, it's the coxman. I had to learn that. Uh, but you're, you're, you're listening to the coxman tell you, just row. I'm going to direct you. Just go. Don't think about yesterday. Don't think about the trouble. It's gone. Like trouble's going to pass. Trust in God, blah, blah, all that stuff PJ does. But then when you guys bring it up, because Kevin O'Connell came here and talked about culture and people ate it up like Skittles and, and, and jelly beans. Why, why can an NFL coach say culture and everybody loves it? And then some college coaches say culture and people question it. Like, is it because it's pro? I think so. Um, a lot of times you tend to hear culture being mentioned a lot in, in college because um, a lot of those guys use those words for we're going to have this type of culture. We're going to have a family atmosphere. We're going to have, you know, my doors are going to be open. A lot of times you just hear it and it's just a lot of times it's just blah, blah, blah. But there are a lot of coaches out there that definitely have a culture. You can go into their building and walk around and you can feel it. You can see it. You can experience it. And you go to other places and you hear them talk about culture, but there is no culture. What is the culture? It's, you right. know, it's chaos. And so I think when you hear from a pro coach, you're like, ah, yeah, you know, he's coming with that college stuff. But when you actually see it work and you see the guys buying into it and, and you get an opportunity to come into the building, then you really, really get an understanding of what he's talking about and what we're talking about. And, and you have a son, you know, talking about culture. Um, he picked the University of Duke. And you have been a coach. At any point, did he consider coming with dad, or was it always like I'm going to go with what's best for me? Um, if you ask my wife, she she won them all here, right here, wherever <laughs> I'm coaching. But uh, no, I, I didn't want that. I, I wanted him to go to a place uh, where he felt was going to give him the best um, chance to get a great education, um, to 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 continue what we've started in our home, to be mm -hmm. an extension of who we are. And to be around those kind of men and, and women and also play a high level football and, and to have fun and, 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 and just just go out there and do it the right way. And, and knowing that this football is, you know, it's gotten you thus far. So you got to use that football to get you to your next step in life. And so what's that best step? What's that next best step? Um, and it was Duke. And um, we're happy that he chose Duke. And I think if he had to do it all over again, he would probably do the same thing. Yeah, because Duke is a basketball school. Like, when yeah. I think about Duke, I think about basketball. And now I will say, my best friend, D. Bryant, long time ago, this was 1998, he was the starting quarterback as a freshman for Duke. He went to Duke. He also played basketball. He was one of the kids with Reggie Love. I don't know if you know the Duke story, but Reggie Love, who's Obama's body man, went to Duke as well. Uh, something for Chris maybe to look into because he has some great alumni. But, yeah, Reggie Love was Obama's body man, which means he was his, he was his main man. He was his assistant, did everything for him. Uh, but Reggie Love was a receiver there. D. Bryant was one of the kids that was on the Final Four team. They got in trouble for turning in the same paper. They all bought a paper online, thought they were going to change it. Nobody changed it. They got in trouble. Um, so when I when I when I hear about Duke and, and these things like the basketball play, and this was crazy, the basketball players that did it didn't get in trouble. 
the football players that did it did. So for him, or and you're the dad, like how was that being around campus where that kind of was the mentality, like like as far as being dialed into the fans where it's basketball, 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 and then football is kind of like, all right, we'll show up if you guys are good. Yeah, yeah, it was. I think it was tough on them early because you know they, just coming from um, some of the places we were at when he was growing up, you know, the Alabamas, the Clemsons, yeah, and and to, and, and to see that atmosphere and to to that competitiveness of uh, elite players going at it every day, uh, I think he was looking for that uh, in a sense, but he wasn't naive knowing that he wasn't going to get all of that. But I, I imagine he wanted to get some of that, and then going to Duke and then getting there on campus and, you know, Zion is there and those guys. Are there. Oh yeah. <laughs> so they're like, a, and we pick at them all the time about it. You know, uh, he's just, a, <laughs> they weren't the main show at the time, but believe it or not, man, they had a lot of guys off his team, man. That's actually in the NFL. Now it's, it's crazy. The number of guys that's, that's uh, from his class that, uh, that's in the league. Yeah. I'm surprised coach K didn't help recruit football. Cause I feel like, you know, with his help, like it's coach. I don't care if it's football. It's Coach K. Like Coach exactly. K walks into your living room with the football coach just to say, "Hey, man, Duke's a great place." Like, I feel like a lot of football players would be like, "Man, this is Coach K. Like, yeah. cool. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm I'm check it out." But yeah, you're right. I forgot about Zion. Like, I, I, and I will say this: like, your son seems like a great human being. I mean, you and I have talked a couple of times. I'm glad your son didn't follow in the footsteps of Zion because right now off the field, Zion is in absolute dismay. Like, he is the he's what coaches hate to w- open the phone up on the morning. And have to see, like, what are you doing? Like, it's not anything illegal. It's just dumb. Like, what are you doing right now? Like, bruh, get your life together. But (laughs) got to be careful. Got to be careful. And so as a coach, again, you're coaching grown men. And so Zion is a grown man. And I'm pretty sure you've been at stops where grown men make mistakes. But as a coach, because I heard you you talk about, you know, being blessed by God. and, and, And God is definitely somebody you can always turn to. But as a coach, how do you breathe that into these men? Because it's not college anymore where 18 to 22 year old boys are pliable. You can take them like, you know, it's like clay. I can I can mold them. I can help them. I can be another dad to them. You got a 25, 26 year old grown man. Um, How do you still try to like pour life into him? Uh, I I use personal experiences. Uh, You know, one of the things before I even. One of the things I don't like to do, I, I don't like to turn the clicker on, grab the clicker and just go football first time we get in the, in the room. You know, we're going to take a couple minutes and just talk about life and uh, and just find out how they're thinking and and, and, and make some decisions. You know, I, I may even bring them examples from from home. I might say something that happened at my house. Hey, my wife mm-hmm. got on me about this. My son did this. You know, my wife thought we should have done this. I thought we should have did this. What y'all think? You know, who was right? Who was wrong? How should I have handled it? And then all of a sudden, man, we just start – the conversation just goes because, you know, I have – you know, what now I have two guys. Dean just got married this past weekend. And uh, so I got two guys in my room right now that's married, and I have um, Harrison that's um, is getting married next month. So we're, we're having these conversations, and they're asking questions. Man, Coach, you know, how in the world are you married 26 years? How did you <laughs> – you know, man, God, Coach, you know. So uh, we just have open conversations, and, and I'm not always right. I don't always have the answer, but we try to lead the room with, with some type of answer, you know, somebody, okay. you know, we're going to come to some type of conclusion. And, and sometimes it's like, yo, we got to get going. We'll continue this tomorrow or a couple of days later. So uh, just bringing some real life issues. And, um, and sometimes I have to, you know, open up myself to some things and, and, and they appreciate that. Yeah. I think, I think honest, uh humility is the word i guess i'll use is, is when the coaches can can you know bring themselves down to level show like man i'm just like you i make mistakes just like you uh i will make sure to send you the clip of you saying i'm not always right because i know your wife would love to have that on her Come phone on, man. hey look man <laughs> what you doing you trying to break I, <laughs> hey you trying to break up a happy home <laughs> i'm just saying no because that's the point like so when you say something and she could just go to the clip to say well yeah he said he's not always right so okay i'll, I'll let this one slide so i'm trying to help you out because i know women love to hear that when we can admit we're not always right hey it, it adds another day to our life um <laughs> but when you <laughs> saying i'm not right a day keeps 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 your wife away from uh being mad at you oh that's the new one uh, but when you when you think about your players and you just brought that up, being married, life stuff, uh, everything they go through, 
Um, and then you look at, you know, your son, same thing. Like he's now a grown man and he's heading into these, um, you know, how often do, you know, you still have those grown men conversations with him? Cause your high school son is in one part of his life, but then you have a, a grown son in a different part of his life. Oh man. We, we talk daily about it. You know, my wife is constantly on his head. Uh, I'll give you a, a real life example that just happened, uh, yesterday, um, the, the people in his in his building said that his music was so loud, was too loud. Oh, okay. And they just moved in there, and so he's like, "Hey, how they gonna report me? This, that, and other?" And they just got here, and it's not my music. I'm going there. He's huffing, puffing. He's all upset. So, you know, we just talk. Say, "Hey, how do you want to handle this, man? You know, you know, who who are the people? Do you know? Have you met them? Is she a lady? Is she single? Does she have kids? How old are the kids? What's her situation? Is she sick?" So there's a lot of things that could be going on. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when are you playing your music? You know, does she work, you know, second shift or whatever? She has to get up early. There's a lot of things. It's not just your side. So before we go and, you know, go down, storm into the office and saying this, 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 what I didn't do, let's find out everything that's involved with it. Um, sit down with a calm head and make a decision. And then now we can go and we can talk once we gathered all the facts and we can go and say, Hey, okay, here's the deal. Okay. I understand whatever you have a young kid. He has a good rest. Maybe, you know, my day when I get home, I'm still, you know, geeked up from practice or whatever. So right. just, just simple things like that. Just, yeah, no, that's uh, that's legit. Cause yeah, a lot of people would just go fight right away. Like yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I pay here. I can play my music. You deal with it. Like it's not exactly. even that loud. It does. Yeah, no, you're right. Cause I think as a world, if we could all look at other people's issues first before we're worried about what we feel like in that issue, it probably would help ninety percent of the issues we have in America right now. Uh, you know, I think that's the problem. Is we don't look at the other person. We always worry about how does this affect me. We sure. don't think about how they're already affected because um yeah and my wife's the same way like she she's a bible study leader and you know she's a dean of students at a christian high school here in minnesota so she's constantly uh doing that to me even like you know because i'm i'm that person i'm your son like i'm the person where i'm like man this is why, why are you bothering me you know and i don't think about like well look i had breakfast this morning i can go home and i have a bed there you, um, go. you know my, my marriage is good my kids are healthy my daughter is one of the best softball players of her age um so life is good Yes. You know, I work for the Minnesota Vikings. I work for Fox. I'm doing work for NBC and, and Locked On. I have my own podcast. So, yeah, so there's things where I'm extremely blessed, and I forget sometimes other people aren't afforded that ability, and I, they just want to take it out on me for that day, um, not even realizing what the, the back factor. So I'm glad you gave me something to walk away with because I, I forget about that sometimes that, yeah. you know, don't don't worry about other people because I, I honestly just posted Stefan Diggs' comment when he said, uh, if y'all want to lie about me, go ahead and cap them, big fella. Because clearly the Buffalo Bills, he doesn't feel like Josh Allen or somebody's telling the complete truth. And so even in that moment, I'm thinking like, it could be worse. Like there's people that are going to talk about you regardless, or they're going to say things about you that, that might not be true, but they just want to feel right and okay in that moment. Exactly. Um, so no, no, I, I appreciate that coach. Uh, here's a, here's another one for you. When you look at, you know, you got to the Minnesota Vikings, the defense was good, but then all of a sudden now Ed Donatel has gone and you got Brian Flores. And uh, Josh Metellus made the comment. He said it's chaotic and calm at the same time. When you think about Brian Flores, because we know Ed Donatel is good. I, this was the only thing I'll say about coaches. And I was with Indianapolis coach. So I was there with Tom Moore, Howard Mudd, all those guys uh, as a coach. And, and what I learned from Tony Dungy was every coach has a plan, a great plan. But every coach needs puzzles to make that plan work. And if the puzzle pieces to your plan, like you might want to say, I'm going to blitz 15 times, but if you don't have anybody to get up to the quarterback, you can't blitz 15 times. Correct. So your defense might work. So clearly Ed Donatel's system didn't work with the people he had. And he tried to, I, I call it putting a square peg in a round hole. Like he tried, but it just was things missing. Brian Flores is more of like chaotic scatter. Like I'm going to create a painting that you have no idea what this painting looks like. But when you back up, you're like, oh my goodness, this is a Rembrandt. Like, this is great. So when you see Brian Flores' defense, what does he bring into the table to these guys that maybe Ed Donatel uh, didn't do because they're just different? Yeah, I think, um, you know, both these guys are, are great coaches and uh, they both have their system and how they want to uh, run it and how they want it to look. And uh, for whatever reason, um, you know, the picture that um, 
Coach Ed wanted to paint, uh, didn't, using your words, uh, maybe didn't come out as, as good as it's been in the past for whatever mm -hmm. reason. And, you know, right now we have a new artist. So uh, we got to give it some time and, and see the picture that he's painting. Uh, right now, you know, we have a canvas and he has some, some different colors. And so it's up to him along with ourselves, uh, myself and Durante and Mike Smith and Swerve um, and DJ and the rest of the guys to, to help him create uh, a beautiful masterpiece. And I think that masterpiece is an ongoing process. And uh, I think we'll know more about it once camp begins. Uh, Cause you know, once, you, you know, anytime there's something new, you're excited about it. Everybody's excited um, about that toy that you get. Um, yeah. But we gotta, we gotta just, we gotta see, you know, right now we're just running around in shorts and helmets. So yeah. everybody's doing the same. Everybody in the country is feeling the same way that we're feeling right now. Hey, we're going, this is the year we're going to win the Super Bowl, this, that, and the other. You know, we haven't practiced yet. There's no injuries. There's no, you know, uh, adversity. None of that stuff has hit yet. You know, you haven't lost two games back to back, you know, any of that stuff. Um, so uh, right now, uh, the canvas is there. It's a blank canvas. Um, we got some paint, um, and we're going to have to go out there and we have to paint an unbelievable picture. And I think we can. Yeah, no, and here's a guy I want you to talk about. So you look at a Caleb Evans. You know, and I'm not going to say he's this guy, but Mel Blunt is my uncle. He came on my show a couple while, a while ago, talked about being a six four cornerback. And my dad was the other cornerback on the other side of him at six feet, which two decent sized corners. <clears throat> but Mel said the one thing that he did differently was his length. He could jam a guy and still create two yards of separation because he didn't have to get close to just not even jam him hard. Just I'm going to make you think I'm touching you, but my arms are long enough. My speed is fast enough that if you beat me by a yard, my arms can break up a ball uh, because I can get there. So Mel Blunt talked about being a tall corner and, and people hadn't seen anything like him. And in his day, it would have been be a safety because you're six four. But he's like, no, I can cover. I can run. I can move. When you think about a Caleb Evans at six four with speed, with length, with the ability, uh, how good can he be? You know, I think a Caleb can be as good as he wants to be. Like you said, he has all those um athletic attributes um he has you know toughness he has speed he has length he's smart uh i think he's just going is with him it's all about health just yeah. remaining healthy um because he has everything that you just spoke about he has those things and um dj and those guys doing a great job uh, of coaching him up him and hutch and um and I, i'm excited for him you know just seeing him what he was able to do last year and just getting a little sneak peek and I'm just excited for him this year uh, that he can go and have a, a healthy season. I think he'll do well. Yeah, and, and Dean Lowry, I'm guessing he's not Reggie Wayne. The reason I joke is because when Reggie Wayne, I was when I was coaching with the coach, Reggie Wayne was my guy uh, for those two seasons. But he got married. And uh, I remember Howard Mudd walking into the room when we all found out Reggie was about to get married. And he was like, well, the streets of Indianapolis are going to be safer. Um, Dean Lowry's not that guy, but he is getting married. When you look at his talent and you coach him up, uh, what can Vikings fans look forward to with Dean Lowry? Because he's coming from the Packers. We know that. Uh, but what does he bring to the table? No, I think it just the first thing is just his experience. Uh, I think he's going to be a coach on the field for some of his young guys. You know, we have a really don't have an old room, sort of say. We got some young guys. I think he's going to be able to um, give those guys some little tips. You know, we coach the game, but, you know, once that ball snaps, you know, his own. So he, right. he know all the little tricks of the trades so and he's going to be able to help those guys. Um, you know, he's a big guy, has a lot of size, his height, weight. And so he's going to be a guy that's going to be able to create some problems and create some matchups that um, is going to hopefully work in our favor. Yeah. And when you think about last one, if we get out of here, I'm Ron Johnson's Chris Rump, uh, defensive back or defensive line coach for Minnesota Vikings, Kevin O'Connell. I mean, he's one of the new young guns. I look at Bright, uh, uh, Matt LaFleur, uh, you got Zach Taylor, uh, you, you got um, Sean McVay, and then you got uh, Shanahan and Mike McDaniels. I would say Kevin O'Connell's in there. One, um, I mean, he's an, I mean, he's one of those guys that when women look at him, they like him. Like he's an attractive young guy, so so he hit he fits that mold. Uh, he's also a guy that, that. What you're saying is that when KO comes around, I need to hold my wife a little closer. Maybe, maybe because <laughs> I because I look at the tweets like the young ladies on Twitter, um, they love KOC, they love absolutely love. Uh, Matt LaFleur. I don't know what it is about Matt LaFleur and the Packers, but I feel like when those two, when the Packers play the Vikings, I feel like more women show up just for the coaches. Like they don't even care about the game. 
Um, and then when you think about, you know, Sean McVay, but with those guys, though, man, they're all young, they're innovative, they're willing to do what it takes and create new stuff. I actually saw old dog learn new tricks in Tom Moore. Tom Moore coached my dad at Eastern Michigan. <laughs> then he coached my dad with the Steelers. That's how old Tom Moore saw me being born. Like he, every day I came to work, he made sure to point that out. Like, dude, I remember when you threw up on Mel Blunt. <laughs> like, I'm like, all right, we get it. We get it. I'm, I'm, you're old. I'm young. Uh, but he felt like he was like, man, I need to retire when I see my, my player sons now coaching. Um, but Tom Moore was an old dog that learned a new trick. His new trick, of course, had he had to learn it was Peyton Manning. He was willing to let Peyton Manning do whatever it needed to win. And he would say, hey, here's three plays in the headset. You pick one. Here's two plays in the headset. You pick one. And he let Peyton really run that offense. When you think about Kevin O'Connell being one of these new coaches that want to try new stuff, um, how exciting is that as a staff? Like when you know you're walking in and, and, and KOC is willing to do some of these new age stuff, whether it is uh, we got to, you know, we got to find ways to feed JJ or, or like, you know, if you guys come up with a new blitz, help us out because we need to get better. Um, how how fun is that being around a younger coach like that? It's it's, it's very refreshing. You know, um, sometimes in this league, you know, guys get stuck in their ways and they, you know, just want to keep ramming their head into a wall and, and, and hoping and wishing that it gets done instead of thinking outside of the box and say, all right, we, this is what we have. How can we utilize what we have to yeah. make sure that, you know, one, JJ is in the right position and in the, or the best position to be successful. The team is in the best position to be successful. And I, I think, you know, consistency of, of KO and how he handles himself every day in the office and in the building is goes back to the culture. You know, he, he doesn't change. You know, he, he's that way. If we win by 10 or we lose by 10, he's the same way. Hey, how can we get better? Right. And I think the guys feed off of that and the guys love it. And to back what you say, he's not scared to to use something different. Hey, I saw this here. This guy did this. Hey, y'all want to try this? You know, things like that. So I think that's really cool. And I think with the flow, I think having the same mindset, I think is a, is a yeah. match made perfectly. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm, I mean, literally, I've never been excited about a season coming up because that means I got to work a ton, but I'm excited. Like, I'm excited to see, like, I, 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 you just know, I'm a football guy. So I'm excited to see the blitzes. Like, we're working on some content stuff this season with the Vikings uh, where I'm going to break down a play maybe every Monday, whether there's defense or offense. So I'm excited because I know, like, somebody puts Justin Jefferson in the backfield, it doesn't always mean he's getting the ball. But at least you do it because you want to see what the defense is going to do when Justin ends up in the backfield. That's stuff that older coaches, like you would never see Randy Moss, Jerry Rice. Like you wouldn't see those guys, Terrell Owens. You wouldn't see those guys in the backfield because it's just not normal. It doesn't make sense. And in their mind, they're like, why am I, why am I motioning this for no reason? Because you're getting a reaction from the defense and then use that reaction later in the game. And uh, yeah, anyway, so I'm Ron Johnson. That's Chris Runt. We can talk football all day, but we got to get out of here. We got to pay some bills. XM Radio, proud partner, Locked On Sports. Coming up next, we got a word from them. And then we also got the Daily Three. That's three questions, probably a minute each because we went a little long with Coach. But, hey, seriously, man, I could talk football with you for hours. So we'll have to, we'll have to link up because you're in Eden Prairie, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm in Chanhassen. So we'll have to uh, get the families together because uh, my wife, my, I got two little girls. Uh, but, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely have to link up. Uh, but thank you for joining me, man, on the Ron Johnson no Show. Problem. Hey, y'all take care. Be blessed. Thank you. All right, have a good one. All right. Well, Sam, that'll do it for us today on the Ron Johnson Show. I want to thank everybody for listening. Remember, you can search Locked On Sports Minnesota on any iTunes platform, any Spotify platform, uh, Amazon Fire, Roku, wherever you get it. Just search Locked On Sports Minnesota. You'll get all of our shows. Uh, again, later next week, we got Dontarius Thomas, former Vikings linebacker, uh, played at Auburn. He's going to join us on the Hanging Ron Johnson segment next week. And we got some other guests that are going to join us. This is the 4th of July, so enjoy the holiday next week. And uh, that'll do it for us today. I want to thank you guys and have a good one.